Here are the video solutions for AQA Functional Skills Level 2 Maths. Um, this is paper 2, so a calculator paper, and this is March 22. So section A, we want to circle the smallest number. We've got a mixture of positive and negative numbers. Negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers, so we can ignore the 1 and the 0. So the smaller of the two numbers is, is the one which is more negative, so therefore that is negative 5. Number two, complete the table to show equivalent fractions, decimals and percentages. So the first line, 17 twentieths, which is 0 0.85. Now to turn a decimal into a percentage, we, uh, we multiply by 100. So grab your calculator if you um, can't do this in your head. 0 0.85 times 100 is 85%. So similarly, or the opposite way around, to convert the percentage into the decimal, we are dividing by 100. So 4 divided by 100 is 0 0.04. Okay, so um, the um, final row, 59%. Um, I'm not convinced the calculator is going to be much use here. 59% uh, means 59 out of 100. And here we have it as a fraction. Um, is it a fraction in its simplest form? Um, can we divide the top and the bottom by something? The answer is no, we can't. Um, 59 is a prime number, so 59 one hundredths is the fraction here. Let's move on now to question three. So we want to find the coordinates of the midpoint. Um, so as it's a horizontal line, this question is really not that bad. Let's just measure the line. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six divided by two is three. So the midpoint is gonna be three across, one, two, three. So remember with coordinates, we go along the corridor and up the stairs. So it's five, three, not three, five. Um, here are six numbers, work out the median. So to work out the median, first of all, we need to put the numbers in order. So seven, seven, eight, 10, 13, 15. Okay, so what I'm gonna to do to find the one in the middle is I'm gonna chop off one on the left and one on the right. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I get one in the middle. Now, unfortunately, I don't get one in the middle. I get two in the middle, and that's because we've got an even number of values. Now, when we've got an even number of values and we get two in the middle, the median is exactly halfway between the two in the middle. Halfway between eight and 10 is nine, so the median is nine. Um, express 76 as a percentage of 200. Well, 76 out of 200, that is the same as a what out of 100. Well, we can see that the number on the bottom has been divided by two. So let's divide 76 by two. And um, 76 divided by two, you can do that on a calculator, of course, is 38. So the answer is 38%. Question number six, we're sharing 126, we don't know what it is, could be pounds, could be marbles, could be anything in the ratio of three to 11. Now three plus 11 is 14. So what we want is three fourteenths and 11 fourteenths of 126. So what is three fourteenths of 126? Well, that is 126. If, we, if we're working out a fraction of an amount, we take our total, we divide by the number on the bottom and then multiply by the number on the top. 126 divided by 14 times 3 is 27. And for the 11 fourteenths, it's just 11 fourteenths of 126. So 126 divided by 14 multiplied by 11, and that is 99. And just as a final check, 99 plus 27 is 126. So we know we've definitely got it right. Okay, question seven, which is closer to 9.5? 9.073 or 9.916. So what's the difference between 9.5 and 9.073? Well, the difference means let's do some subtraction. So 9.5 minus 9.073, that is 0 0.427. And 9.916 minus 9.5, let's grab the calculator again, 9.916, take away, 9.5, that is 0 0.416. So the one that is close to 9.5 is gonna be the one that has generated the smaller answer. This is the smaller answer, so therefore 9.916 is closer to 9.5 than the other number. So section B, question eight. 
Um, we know that Mia has reduced the price of the fish tanks by 17% and we want to see if she's calculated this new price correctly. So there's two ways we can do this. If something has been reduced by 17%, then what that means is we are now paying 100% uh, minus 17%. In other words, we are paying 83%. So what is 83% of 195 pounds? So the calculation is 0 0.83 times 195, so 0 0.83, this is our multiplier for 83%, so it's 83 divided by 100, that's where that comes from, and that comes to 161 pounds 85. So has she calculated the new price, price correctly? The answer is no. <clears throat> Another way you could work this out is, well, let's work out 17% of uh, 195, so what is 17% of 195? So that is 0 0.17 times by 195, again 17%, the multiplier is 0.17, 17 divided by 100, and that comes to 33 pounds 15. So this is the reduction. So we just need to take the 33 pounds 15 from the 195, and guess what? It gives us 16185, so the answer is still no, she's not uh, priced it correctly. Moving on to part uh, B. Okay, so Alex makes food for his dogs. He uses two pounds of mince to make 12 portions, and we want to work out whether he's got enough for 21 portions. So two pounds, that will give us uh, 12 portions, and we are interested in uh, 21 portions, which is quite an annoying number. If it was 24, that'd be nice, because that'd be, it'd be double the number of portions, so double the weight. So how many times greater is 21 than 12? Well, what we need to do is divide 21 by 12, and 21 divided by 12 is 1.75. So we have 1.75 times as many portions, so therefore we need 1.75 times as many pounds of mince, and two multiplied by 1.75 is 3.5 pounds. Okay, so we've got 3.5 pounds of mince, but we, of course, the uh, measurement for the weight now is in kilos. Now, we know from this uh, conversion rate here, we know that one kilo is 2.2 pounds, and we have got 3.5 pounds. Again, it's quite an annoying value here. If it was 4.4, that'd be easy, because it'd be double, so two kilos. So how many times greater than 2.2 is 3.5? Well, 3.5 divided by 2.2 is 1.590909. So therefore, we need to multiply 1 by 1.590909, which is, of course, 1.5909 kilos. So uh, let me just scroll down a little bit there. So um, he's got 1.5 kilos. He needs 1.59 kilos. So does he, is this enough to make 21 portions of food? The answer is no, it is not. Okay, question 8C. Sophie has a hutch for her pet rabbit. Um, the floor area is 4.46 square meters. And Sophie builds a new hutch. And it's the shape of an, um, an octagon. And we've been given the formula for the area of a regular octagon, which is 2s squared brackets one plus the square root of two. Okay, so what we know the side length of the new floor is 1.1 so we need to do 2 multiplied by 1.1 squared brackets 1 plus root 2 just type this into the calculator exactly as we've got here and we end up with 5.84239 uh, so we want to know how much bigger well then we just need to subtract so 5.84239 minus the old one, which is the 4.46, and we end up with 1.382396821. Um, it doesn't tell us how we want the answer rounded, but I would use a, probably use it, um, the two decimal places, um, since it was given to two decimal places uh, to begin with, so we'll call that 1.38 square meters. Okay, on to uh, question number nine. So we know the cost of the summer house and the delivery charge. Now Lisa lives, well, 
she's got a delivery charge for 84 miles so that's going to be 84 lots of two pounds 25 and 84 times 225 is 189 so that is the delivery charge there so the total cost is going to be the uh, 5964 plus 189 so that comes to 6153 so that is the total now she needs to make a deposit of two sevenths so the question is well what is two sevenths of uh, 6153 so here we're working at a fraction of an amount so we're going to take our total we are going to divide it by the number on the bottom and then multiply by the number on the top and 6153 divided by 7 multiplied by 2 is 1758 so that is the deposit amount 1758 and now we want to work out the monthly payments so um, the total cost was 6153 so she's paid the 1758 so what is left um, the remaining amount or the balance is 4395 so if she's paying this over 12 equal monthly payments then the monthly payment will be 4395 divided by 12 and that is 366 pounds and 25 pence there we go so monthly payment 366.25 okay part b um, these are the dimensions and we need to draw this on the centimeter grid but um, the scale is 1 to 100 so uh, what this means is that this drawing will be 100 times smaller than reality so we need to divide these values by 100 so 450 divided by 100 is 4.5 centimeters on the grid and 3 centimeters on the grid and this 400 centimeters will be 4 centimeters and this 500 centimeters will be 5 so I'm going to scroll down so I'm going to probably lose this so that's 4.5 by 3 okay so we want um, it's got to be four well 400 centimeters from the wall so four centimeters from the wall so this is a centimetre grid so what here's the wall so one two three four so it must be uh, this side and it's also got to be five is that five centimetres from the flower bed so one two three four five okay so it can't be in this area here or this area here it's got to be up here somewhere so it's a 4.5 by 3 so any option will do so let's go top top right corner is fine so one two three one two three four and a half there we go so it could go here I mean it could go a little bit to the left it could go down a fair bit as well so this is where the hutch should be in somewhere in this area here a rectangle that is 4.5 by 3 okay so Lisa is buying a heater for the summer house and we've got the minimum heater size um, needs to be the area of the front times the length now we have been told the length is 4.5 so let's just turn that into 4.5 so what we need to do is work out the area of the front so what we've got here this is the front so we've got a rectangle 3 times by 1.9 so in terms of meter squared 3 times by 1.9 is 5.7 square meters and here we've got a triangle so the area is base times the height divided by 2 so that's 3 times by 0 0.6 divided by 2 and that comes to 0 0.9 so the total area of the front face is 6.6 .6 square meters okay so here is our calculation 6.6 .6 times 4.5 times 0 0.058 let me write that down here so 6.6 .6, that's the area of the front face multiplied by its length times by 4.5 multiplied by the uh, 0 0.058 and that is 1.7226 now what does that mean oh she can buy a 1 kilowatt heater or a 2 kilowatt heater well a 1 kilowatt heater is not going to be enough because we want 1.7226 so therefore she should buy the 2 kilowatt heater so we can say she needs to buy I mean we this is probably 
just one final mark for stating the obvious here. The key is the maths we've done before, uh, but we need to write some words down and that will more than suffice. Oh, maybe should have written it here, there we go. Two kilowatt heater. Okay, so question number 10, earnings and saving. Jamal works for a company. His normal rate of pay is £9.50 and his overtime is one and a half times his normal rate. So even though I don't know what's coming in the question, I think it would be sensible to work at his overtime rate, which is £9.50 multiplied by 1.5 and that comes to a total of £14.25. Now he does 38 hours at the normal rate. So that's 38 multiplied by the normal rate, which is £9.50 which comes to uh, 361 pounds. And then there's an additional six hours at the improved hourly rate of 14 pounds 25, and that comes to 85 pounds 50. Oops, let's try that again, 85 pounds 50. So the total he gets paid is 361 plus the overtime, and that comes to 446 pounds and 50p. Now this isn't the amount he receives unfortunately because we're told that anything over 242 gets taxed at 22, uh, 20% and anything over £184 will ha have national insurance deducted. So uh, so let's work out the, the income tax first of all. So how much of this amount is over 242? Well the calculation is 446 take away, uh, 44650 take away 242 and that is £204.50. So this is the amount that will have income tax applied to it. So we need to work out 20% of £204.50. Now the calculation for 20% is 0 0.2. This is the percentage multiplier for 20% is 20 uh, divided by 100. 0 0.2 multiplied by 204.50 and that comes to uh, £40.50. 90. So this is the uh, income tax. So we're going to do a similar thing for the national insurance. How much of his earnings is over 184? Well that is going to be the total earnings 44650 minus the 184 and that comes to £262.50 and we want to work out 12% of this. So what is 12% of £262.50? The multiplier for 12% is 0.12 multiplied by 262.50 and that comes to £31.50 and that is the national insurance. So the total amount he will receive is the, uh, the £446.50 take away the £40.90 income tax minus the £31.50 national insurance and what do we get? We get £374.10p. There we go. So the answer is 374.10. Um, another approach you could do is you could add the tax, combine the two deductions and that would come to £72.40 and subtracts the £72.40 from 44650 or you can just do two subtractions in one hit. But either way, you should get a final answer of £374.10p. Uh, Moving on to 10B, should he choose Bank A or Bank, or bank B? So he's in Bank A, he's getting compound interest, meaning he'll get interest on previously earned interest. So he starts with £2,500 and we need to increase this amount by 1.5% three times. Now the percentage multiplier for 1.4% is 0 0.014, this value here divided by 100, but we want to increase by 1.4%, so I need to add one to this multiplier. So I'm gonna be multiplying 2,500 by 1.014 three times, in other words, to the power of three or times 1.014 times 1.014 times 1.014, same thing. And that comes to 2,606 points. I'll just round it to the nearest penny. Now, if he goes with bank B, it's gonna be 2,500 plus 49.15 plus 
£56.30 and that comes to £2,605.45 so we can see he's slightly better off with Bank A so he should choose Bank A. Okay, question number 11. So we know that there are um, the ratio of staff to children is two to 17. And we've been told that there are six staff on duty. Now that is three times more than two. So therefore for an equivalent ratio, we need to multiply 17 by three and 17 multiplied by three is 51. So we know there are 51 children in total. If 35 are under seven, then the rest must be over seven. So 51 minus 35 is 16. So there must be 16 children aged seven or over. Moving on to part B, a new sand pit is built at the soft play center. Fascinating. The sand pit is in the shape of a cylinder of radius 120 and it's filled with clay sand to a depth of 15 centimetres and we've been told it's sold in 50 litre bags, the cost per bag is this and we know that a litre of sand is 1000 cubic centimetres. So what we need to do is work out the volume of sand. Now uh, the volume of any three dimensional shape is the area of its face multiplied by its uh, height or its depth. Now here the face is a circle, so the area of a circle is pi r squared, so it's going to be pi r squared multiplied by a height of 15. So it's going to be 15 lots of pi r squared, so that's 15 multiplied by pi, we'll call that 3.142, multiplied by the radius which is 120 squared, and that comes to um, quite a large number, 6, 7, 8, six, seven, two cubic centimeters. Now I'm gonna convert this into liters to go from cubic centers to centimeters to liters, we are dividing by 1000. So six, seven, eight, six, seven, two divided by 1000. That is six, seven, eight point six, seven, two liters. Now we need to work out how many 50 liter bags that is. So uh, how many 50s go into six, seven, eight? So six, seven, eight point six, seven, two divided by 50. That comes to 13.57. Now, it seems unlikely that we can buy such a precise number of bags, so we're gonna to have to round that up to 14 bags. Okay, now we know the 14 bags are nine pound 97 each, so the final calculation is 14 multiplied by nine pounds 97, and that comes to a total of 139.58. There we go, so 139. Question C. Okay, so the probability, so um, a child is chosen at random and we want to see whether the probability that the child is aged between seven to nine is greater than three tenths. Okay, so what is the, what fraction of the children are uh, between seven and nine? Well, that is 13 out of a total of uh, 8 plus 15 plus 13 plus 4 which is 40 so it's 13 out of 40 okay so is this greater than 3 tenths okay so what I'm going to do is it's much easier comparing fractions when they've got the same number on the bottom now 3 tenths we can convert that into twentieths that is 6 twentieths just doubling the bottom number and the top number and I can double the bottom and the top again. So I've got it out of 40, so that's 12 out of 40. Is So 13, 13 over 40 and 12 over 40. Well, yes, 13 fortieths is clearly greater than 12 fortieths. So is the manager correct? Yes, he is. <laughs>